Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Earth Day. Uh, my name is Ko Im. I'm the department's editor and podcast co-host at Adweek. And today we have a very, very special guest. It is Jay Shetty calling in from Los Angeles. And we are so thrilled to have our former monk mindfulness expert uh, with us today. Hi, Jay. Hey, Ko. It's so wonderful to see you again. And so grateful to be with you as well. And I'm so happy to Happy to do this with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, of course. And um, I love um, what Jay stands for. You know, he is an emblem of gratitude. We first met um, in the fall when uh, you were on our cover of our Young Influentials issue. And um, it was wonderful to chat with you about using your influence um, for good, for the good of our health, for the good of our community. And so now we are back a very, very different time. And I wanted to let everyone know that we're going to chat a little bit and then offer a short meditation for you all today. We'll make it like a bonus Wednesday live. Um, but Jay, just tell us about, you know, um, how you are doing as somebody who you know, is a big proponent of just gratitude, but mindfulness and um, you know, community. I think what's really important right now is that I hope that everyone is listening and watching, you know, just making sure I'm sending you all my love and positive messages and, and wishes to each and every single one of you. I'm hoping that you and your family are well. And, and I think for me, whenever this kind of situation arises or, or some sort of change arises, my, my kind of focus always goes to where can I serve? How can I make a difference? How can I be useful at this time? Especially because I'm fortunate enough to be healthy and I'm grateful enough to be safe at this time. So thinking, how can I support and help people? And I always feel that that's where I find my sense of certainty and that's where I find my sense of clarity. And so one of the things I've been sharing with people and really thinking about is if you're in a position of safety and health, how can you get involved in serving and making a difference for other people? And if you're in a place where you're struggling, well, I just want you to know you're not alone. Uh, you're not lonely, you're not disconnected. There are lots of people thinking about you and trying to find ways to serve and help. Yeah, and we talked about this before, but there's this balance of taking care of yourself and serving others. And I think what you and I have both found is that you know having healthy boundaries and having a routine helps. So how are you um, helping yourself by having a routine and what does that look like for you? Yeah, great question. So in psychology, we hear this term <clears throat> uh, compassion fatigue. Well, we've heard about it before, and sometimes we're giving so much of our time. Empathy fatigue, care fatigue. It's where you're like going out of your way constantly, and now everyone around you is uh, feeling like you're giving so much to them, but you're not getting any for yourself. And then the opposite can happen as well, the opposite extreme, where you just kind of self-serve and take care of yourself, and then you feel disconnected. So it's always a balance. It's always self and service. For me, the self part is really important because you can only give what you're full of. And so it's really, really important to create time and space in your day to find that self-care and self-love. So for me, there are four aspects to a powerful routine, a daily routine. And this is actually from my book, Think Like a Monk, which is coming out in September. But I'm sharing it now because I think it's so important for people right now. So the four aspects to a routine, it comes in the form of an acronym called TIME, T-I-M-E. The T stands for thankfulness. Finding just five minutes a day to be thankful, to be grateful for people, places, and projects in your life is such a beautiful experience. And now we hear about feeling gratitude a lot, but one of the things we miss out on is sharing gratitude. What I mean by that is actually telling the person, expressing it, writing a note, writing a voice note. Or if you're really adventurous, going through the 33,794 pictures in your photo gallery, on your phone, and creating an album of your memories with someone and then sending it to them. Just imagine how they're gonna feel and how you're gonna feel after having done that. The second part of the routine is insight or inspiration. It's kind of what we're doing right now. It's what you do on the Adweek podcast so wonderfully. It's finding a book a day. Maybe it's a paragraph. Maybe it's a quote. Maybe it's a podcast that you're listening to. Whatever it is, some inspiration every single day that gets you focused. See, we eat every day when we get hungry. Or what do we do when we get unmotivated? What do we do when we get uninspired? We have to eat for our mind. And the way you eat for your mind 
is by reading a book, paragraph, podcast, a quote to keep you moving forward. The third is meditation. And I know we're going to do a practice together. The third is a meditation exercise. Really important to do a bit of breathing every day because our breath is connected to our emotions. And finally, E is for exercise. It's really, really important to have some movement in your day, whether it's a five minute dance party or it's a virtual workout. So time, thankfulness, inspiration, meditation, exercise. If you do that every day, you will feel so full that you'll want to give for the rest of the day. Yeah, I love that you encapsulated it for us because I think I've been thinking about that amorphously. And, you know, I've posted like dance parties with my friends. Oh, just amazing. My body. Um, and also, you know, it's not just thinking about gratitude, but sharing gratitude. And I think that also applies to the workplace and your coworkers. Like, thank you so much for what you did today because you know, what's coming out of all of this is that, you know, we're all having a very human experience. Um, I love the insight about inspiration, right? Um, so like even social media, I know you have, you know, 5.7 million followers on Instagram. And, you know, Instagram can sometimes um, make us feel more alone, but at the same time, like tech can connect us when you can tap into community or find some kind of quote that's helping you um, sustain yourself through throughout this whole process. So I really, really love that. Um, and I wanted to, to kind of see if you could walk us through, through your day. So you meditate every day and um, are you busier now? You know, um, how do you, how do you sustain your own creativity? Is it just having like that everyday routine that that's, you see that it's working? It's like brushing your teeth or flossing your teeth. Yeah. So because we have so much uncertainty in our lives right now, it's important to have some certainty in your day. And I find that when you start your day with certainty, with your morning routine, then the rest of your day feels easier to manage. It's almost like if you accomplish something in the morning, if you feel like you started your day off right, you carry that energy for the rest of the day. And we know that. So one of the things that I love to do is I wake up in the morning and I meditate every single day. My meditation practice is two hours a day. I've been doing that for a very long time. You don't need to do two hours a day. You can do 20 minutes, you can do 10 minutes. It's, it's enough to, to start off. And so for me, I start my day with my meditation practice. I then work out with my wife at the moment. So we've never worked out together, but this is the time when we're both in the same space. So we've been doing a workout together. We put on a workout on YouTube, put the music up and both of us are working out. And then in between our workout, we, we mess around and dance. And it's been a lot of fun actually. It's been great bonding for us. And so we do that. And then after that, after obviously after showering and all the rest of it, I, I straight into teaching my live meditation that I'm doing every single day on Instagram and Facebook Live. And now I've, I feel I've been busier and busier in the sense that I'm now managing all the discussions and conversations around COVID-19, making sure I'm well informed, making sure things are working. We're doing a lot of private sessions for healthcare professionals, doing things behind the scenes. We're also doing a ton of uh, work for the podcast to make sure we're getting the right information out there. So it just feels like there's a lot more that I'm doing right now. And therefore that morning routine becomes even more important because I can only give myself to the extent that I'm giving to myself. Right? I can only give more of myself um, the more I take care of myself. So that's that's really been important. Yeah, and I, I do wanna thank you for the work that you're doing. You know, you um, I believe you're on another round of like a 20 day meditation challenge for like 20 minutes together. And I like what you say on your Instagram live about, you know, you're not alone because you are tapping into this, you know, collective consciousness for 20 minutes at the same time. But even if you're doing it another time, you're still feeling that energy. And I love the energy right now. I know we're a lot of comments about how, you know, it's great to have an attitude of gratitude and it's nice to be optimistic. And it's also okay if you're not feeling okay, right? But the idea yeah. that you can disrupt your day um, can kind of hack your day and get back into meditation. So I'd love to, I mean, sorry, you were going to say something first. No, no, no. I'm just saying I agree with you. I, I, I don't think there is a mode you have to be in or there isn't a, you should not feel the guilt or judgment that you should be doing something right now. Like if you're thinking like, I'm not the perfect parent, I'm not the perfect partner, I'm not the perfect person. No one is. Like everyone's going to react to this differently. And we've got to allow ourselves the time. And there's actually a few phases that I've been thinking through, and it aligns with the stages of grief that people feel. But I was thinking when we first heard about this pandemic and we first learned about it, 
The first thing we experience was anxiety, right? We all experience anxiety. The second thing we experience usually after anxiety is anger. Anger because our plans are not going to work out or something we invested in isn't going to work out or something we lost something and we feel some anger towards it. And then after anger, usually comes acceptance where you feel a feeling of like, you just accept that this is what's happening. I can't control it. What can I control? And then you focus on adjusting and adapting. And that's the phase that most of us are in. And that's the phase where you don't want to judge yourself or guilt yourself. And finally, you get into action mode where you find a flow. And I think you have to realize we've only done this for 30 days and no one expected, no one had a plan up their sleeve to be like, oh, this is what I'll do in this situation. So you've got to give yourself that time to adjust and adapt and realize that there is no right way of doing this, right? There is no wrong way of doing this. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna check under my seat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so without further ado, I'd, we'd love to share, um, you know, some of your meditation practice uh, for a few minutes and then... Um, Great, let's do it. Yeah, awesome. And I, and I know that we've got some music lined up, so we'll cue that music. It's always nice to have some music in the background. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Thank you. Okay, great. So what I'm going to ask you all to do, wherever you are, is to just close your eyes, lower your gaze, and just find a physical space of calm, balance, ease, stillness, and peace. Bringing your awareness to calm, balance, ease, stillness, and peace. Breathing in through your nose and out. Allowing yourself to breathe in calm. Balance, ease, stillness, and peace. And breathing out any tension or stress or pressure. Just breathing calm, balance, ease, stillness, and peace. When you breathe in, feel your stomach come out, place your left palm on your stomach. And as you breathe out, feel your stomach come in. When you breathe in, feel your stomach come out with your left palm on your stomach. When you breathe out, feel your stomach go in. Now what I'd like you to do it's just visualize yourself in a space that makes you feel calm. What are five things that you can see in this space? It might be the beach, it might be a lake, it might be the sand, it might be the trees. What are five things that you can see in this place that brings you calm? Go through each one of them in your mind. One, two, three, four, five. Visualize yourself in a calming, relaxed environment. Whatever is the most relaxing to you. Breathe in through the nose and out. Now, what are the four things that you can touch in this place? Could be your clothes, could be the chair or the sand or the water. And go through them one, two, three, four. And what are the three things that you can hear 
mind the sounds of the birds, the sounds of the water, the sounds of nature. What are the three things that you can hear and go through them? One, two, three. Breathe in through the nerves and out. Taking in the calm, the peace, the stillness as you breathe in and breathing out any negativity or pressure or tension. And what are the two things that you can smell? It might be the sea, it might be the air, it might be someone's perfume or cologne. It could be the flowers. Breathe in that scent and breathe in calm, balance, ease. And now what's the one thing you can taste? Might be nothing. Might be something you had for breakfast. And just place yourself in this space and breathe in the calming, relaxing energy. And allow yourself to feel the relaxation and calm you get from being in this space. Now three times, breathe in and out. So really extend your exhale. So breathe in for a count of four, but breathe out for more than four. Breathe in for a count of one, two, three, four. And breathe out for a count of more than four. And when you're ready, in your own time, at your own pace, you can gently and softly, when you're ready, open your eyes. Welcome back, everybody. And thank you, Jay so much for helping us find our calm and our center today and for giving us some actionable tips and insights into finding ourselves in a time of crisis. Um, thank you for kind of adjusting the mood of our day. I really, really appreciate your time, all that you do. Um, and thank you so much for, for being with me today. Thank you, Ko. This is a really wonderful opportunity. Thank you to everyone who's been listening or watching. Apologies for the slight technical difficulty, but thank you for bearing with us. So grateful to you, Ko. So grateful to Adweek. And look forward to seeing you again once this is all over. So thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. I'll give you a great big hug. And yes. um, I'm looking forward to, to your book that's coming out, Think Like a Monk. Uh, this fall, and for anyone who wants to find Jay Shetty, he's all over social, um, doing good, and um, you, uh, tomorrow we'll have another episode of Advic Together Live. Thank Perfect. you so much, and have a great rest of your day, and everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mike.